Hello everyone, uh, I just wanted to make a real quick video to show you how to get a simulation out of Houdini into uh, Unreal Engine. We're going to make a flipbook using that. Uh, so I've got this little simulation here, it's just a real simple smoke simulation. Um, so I have my, in my object level, here I have my simulation, I have it cached out using uh, the file cache. And then I have my geometry, and then this is where I load it in. Uh, I'm going to assume you know how to do all of this already, but if you don't, just check on my YouTube channel. I do have a video that covers everything in, in a fair amount of detail. Um, so uh, let's go to the output network here. This is where all your rendering is done. Uh, here I've selected 64 frames to render. I've already done all this, so you don't have to, to watch a, a loading bar. Uh, so once that's done, we're going to go out to the image network and we're going to put down a image network node we're going, to, we're going to jump into the image network node and we're going to grab a file to load files from your computer uh, mine has already loaded these are the so up here you have the view tabs uh, you can select the compositing view to see what you're working on in the image network so you see if i play now it plays this so it's automatically loaded mine, but just in case yours hasn't, click this little button here. And then here is my, my file where I've saved my render. And these is my files, uh, 64 frames is exactly what I want. There you go. So there it is. So we need to take all of these 64 frames and put them into one frame. Uh, and the way to do that is a mosaic node. So mosaic. And you see now here on all these frames here it's empty but if i go to frame one all of my frames here have now been put into this frame one put into frame two frame three and frame four in the settings of the mosaic node you can go to in the images per line you want eight and you want the max frames to be 64. so the reason for this is simple is because we have 64 frames in our our render and 8 times 8 equals 64 you see so now we have 8 times 8 uh, just a little tip you don't actually need it doesn't need to be an 8x8 eight eight, and it doesn't need to be a 4x4 four four, and it never needs to be a 2x2 two two. Um, it can be for instance like uh, eight f uh, 16 frames by 2 oh sorry 16 frames by 4 um, so you'll have this long rectangle uh, sheet like this you could have that if you wanted to, as long as your resolution is a power of two by the end of that. Um, but that, I can cover that in another video if anyone has any questions. So the next node that we need here is a pre-multiply. You don't need it, but I, I highly recommend it as what this will do is it will take the color of your pixel on the outer edge of your smoke and it will stretch it out so that there is no bleeding in Unreal Engine. You see, just like this. So when you take the alpha mask, this is your alpha. And this is your color. Um, all right, so one more node to go. You're just going to need a ROP file output. And then here we're going to say we just want this one frame because all these frames are now empty, right? So this one frame. And then everything is fine. You want to go to output picture. This is the important part. Uh, you want to save it as uh, smoke underscore eight by eight and then the important part is dot tga you see you need to add this this dot tga otherwise houdini wouldn't know what kind of file you want it to save it as if you want to save it as a png or a jpeg or, or whatever else you need to do so dot tga and that should be all fine now you see because you put in a dot tga it c opens up these two uh, parameters here one is your color pane and one is your alpha this is simple as uh, this is your color RGB right and then your alpha is this channel here so it's gonna pack your RGB in, in, in a traditional format and then your alpha channel is gonna carry this what you see here alright so this is ready to uh, to export now so I'm just gonna press export at the, at the top or render rather and when that's done, your file should be saved. 
All right, so we're in Unreal Engine now. I'm just going to import that texture that we saved. Uh, I saved it to desktop, tutorials, uh, render. And here you see it, this is this is the file with all my render files, but what we actually want is this TGA that we saved. Smoke 8x8 TGA. Wait for that to load. And here you go. There is our, uh, our sprite sheet. It's exactly what we need. And that's ready to be used in Cascade, ready for your particles, whatever else you need it for. So just real quick before I go, I'm just going to quickly going to put it into Cascade, uh, just to make sure that you guys are all clear on, on how to do that as well, just in case you do. If you do know how to do that already, uh, you can just end the video here. Uh, thank you for watching and all that. Um, but for anyone else who, who doesn't know how to do that, I'm going to do that real quick just for you. So let's make a material, uh, we'll just call it M underscore new mat. Naming conventions don't really matter. Uh, drop in a texture, hook up the color to the color, and your alpha channel to your opacity. And select your, your material mode here, and change this from opaque to translucent. And that is about it. For further control, you should always just put in a particle color, just for you know, it's a uh, good housekeeping as well, I guess. Um, let's match these ones up. So if you don't know what the particle color node does in Cascade, these kind of nodes, if you go particle, all these nodes, all these particle nodes, they are basically Cascade's controls. So whatever you control or whatever you animate in Cascade, it talks to the material uh, via these nodes. So for instance, this is the particle color node, but there's other things like uh, dynamic, uh, I can't spell today, dynamic parameter. And this is what you can set in Cascade. Uh, you can set values in here, you can set keyframes, curves, and uh, whatever else you want it to do. And then you can tell it to, to do things in your material like randomly change color or increase the emissive over time blah 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 but I can cover that in another video if, if you'd like me to go over that for now we're just gonna leave it like this uh, that looks good to me yep so let's apply that and save wonderful let's move this out the way we don't need it anymore Create a new particle system. Just call it P smoke one. Drag out into the level. <coughs> Open up cascade and this is what you see. So here in the required tab, we're just gonna take this material by going browse. What this will do is it will find it in the content browser. So if I move out the way you'll see. So here it is. If I select this and press this, see it snaps back to the material and then that means that I know that the engine has selected it and I can come to the require tab and then just press this button here and then uh, it's easy as that it's in cascade now because it's an 8x8 material it means it's not gonna look right when you first put it in so you can see it's like well, it doesn't look like the, the smoke puff that I made in Houdini at all so you would want to go to your required and in your required you can scroll down to your sub UV and here you want to say, uh, all right, Unreal Engine, this is an 8x8 eight eight texture. I want you to read it as an 8x8. Eight eight. And you can see now that there's individual puffs of smoke. But you want to tell it to read it from frame 1 to frame 64, one after another. And to do that, you can use a linear blend. And then to get it to play, because you need to actually tell it how and when to play, you need to put in a movie. So there you go. Let's turn this to size up sorry for my loud keyboard um, let's move this up so we can see uh, and then what else should we do let's just make this uh, one All right, and then spawn turn right turn that down just have a burst of one alright there you go so now because it's a 64 frame flipbook, uh, it's gonna cut out before the frames finish with a lifetime of one. Uh, reason for that is, is because the sub UV here 
the frame rate is set to 30 by default and the default of Houdini is 27 I believe so if we set this to 27 then that should play at the correct frame and also the lifetime needs to be increased to 2.2 seconds should be enough there you go you see that's playing it out just nicely uh, let's go radius Want some more oh, not that many all right there you go you see now we have a nice smoke puff well it's it, it'll do for now uh, we can always go back and touch up in Houdini and and go to the simulation and, and do whatever else we need to do uh, to make it look good you know or we can even come into here and play around with uh, say the the brightness right or uh, the blur or you know there's loads of things in here like loads of tools that I haven't even really looked at to be honest uh, but you can always take a look like contrast and and uh, you know whatever else levels is quite, it's quite useful when I, I tend to use quite a lot um, but yeah I mean that that is the basics to go from from Houdini into Unreal Engine um, I hope this has been useful if not please uh, comment and tell me that it's not <laughs> and then I'll uh, I'll try and do my best to help you guys out in the future thanks